Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is a geomagnetic bulletin. Uh, our magnetosphere has reversed uh, briefly and then returned to hmm, semi-normal. And we've had electron storms. And nobody's really telling you about them. And it accounts for a higher radiation level. Many of us have been feeling it this last week. A lot of fatigue, a lot of irritability. Um, and so basically what I wanted to do was just point out some anomalies that I think are interesting. The first anomaly is how when the sun goes reactive, the entire sun does. Uh, at the 5 o'clock position, excuse me, the 7 o'clock position, you see a filament spinning down there. And it, it lifts and almost moves directly vertical. That um, lifting of that filament is nearly simultaneous with a detonation or the hydro flare occurring on this earth facing sunspot that's looking right at you. But this is what I want to show you about. It's been a while since we've seen these types of signatures on and these electron simulations. Um, this is a complete saturation happening on the 14th. Many of these events that show up on this simulation were redacted and taken off of all magnetosphere simulations. Here is a complete and total reversal of our magnetosphere, and the entire magnetosphere. Uh, the jagged edge is due to turbulence and we were told you that we were afraid to start covering electrons because we were afraid the instruments would be taken down. Not only was this one cropped uh, to, to only narrowly reflect a narrow swath of the globe, look at the time, the date, 329, uh, excuse me, 326, that March, January, February, March 26th is when these electron instruments were taken down. No sooner were we worried in saying we're worried about showing you these electron instruments because we're worried they're going to be taken down. No soon, sooner than the words left our lips than those were no longer being updated. We're having a geomagnetic storm. Seven, we're seeing big storms. Uh, not the fives that we normally see with our coronal hole streams. We warned that this would be seismically um, effective, geo-effective, and no sooner were those words leaving our lips than uh, poor Papua New Guinea suffered a 7.5 right in a major volcanic region. The magnetospheres, like I say, were redacted to, during that reversal and during those electron events, but you can see prior to the reversal, those blue Ma magnetic field lines look like they're being drawn in like a vortex. There's, they're creating a V shape in the tail stream of Earth. The sun is off to your right. You're looking directly at Earth. It's supposedly coming right at you in this simulation. But you can see um, the, the magnetic field lines split uh, that are the, the tail stream black magnetic field lines. They split. And in that void, the interplanetary magnetic field, the blue lines that run vertical, are being sucked in like a vortex. That was right prior to our reversal. We look at the proton counts, and the proton counts are basically back ground level. How can you have coronal hole streams, and how can you have coronal mass ejections and no protons? Uh, has the physics changed in the universe? Has the solar system changed? Has astronomy suddenly been turned upside down? No, there's a second source of particles. We think we're entering into the highest density of downstream particles right now. Where we think that planet X is opposite the sun. And when we look at some of the, the uh, solar wind instruments, we see that there's a mixing of temperatures, densities, and speeds between the 11th and the 13th. Did we pass and are we passing in to that focusing cone, which is meeting resistance from all sides. But the reason there's resistance is because 
particles were ejected all throughout um, the solar system. And imagine somebody's circling your wagon with a smoke screen and they do a complete 180 degrees around your wagon. You have smoke on all sides of you. And so, so then where the main new radiant point is for that smoke is kind of obstructed by the previous smoke that was laid down. That is a, my best analogy for what's going on in the solar corona. We look at Mauna Loa Observatory, we see that white um, disc. It looks very symmetrical right now. It didn't used to be pretty, very symmetrical. It used to look like there was an entrance point from the left and an exit point on the right. Now that exit point is no longer uh, very noticeable. That's because we may be passing into the highest density of downstream particles coming from planet X, which is opposite the sun right now. Um, and so what I do is I, I go and look for shifts in that focusing cone. We did see one this month, so it's very possible we could be headed into uh, a focusing cone. It, that's why we're seeing all these electrons because the helium's getting ionized prior to getting to Earth as it passes through the corona of the sun. Notice the sunspots suddenly got active as we approach this alignment. But what we're not seeing is the coronal holes. Usually when there's an alignment, there's a coronal hole that opens up on the solar equator. But we had an encroachment from the north because of the sunspots. You can notice that dark area right above the sunspots. Well, that dark area is a coronal hole. It's being tugged down and morphed, or how can I say distorted, towards those magnetic regions. So those magnetic regions, those active regions, those sunspots, are tugging at the edges of that coronal hole. And you can see that coronal hole creates a, a cavity between the, the main coronal hole and the north pole of the sun. And then it splits wide open, parts the plasma, the surface plasma, kind of like Moses parting the Red Sea. And you can see the magnetic fields uh, all go in to that active region. All magnetic fields lead to that active region that is now on the departing limb today. So, so um, we're seeing a lot of uh, activity com comparatively, relatively. Those sunspots are active even though they're not very well mixed. And we think it's because we're entering into an alignment. But when we try to um, show you the reversals on the other magnetosphere simulations, they did not show up. But this is what um, the whole sequence looked like. And you can see there's a shift right there. Bam. Uh, I, a bunch of electrons streamed in. And all of a sudden, we had a complete and total shift. So I'm going to run this simulation through um, so you can see how these electrons came in. Some came in from the north, it looked like. Some came in from the south, which is what you would expect if they're being created on the opposite side of the sun. But what a distortion to our magnetosphere. And what it does is it increases our seismicity. How so, you ask? Well, you know, people like to say it's a magnetic connection and mag magnetic disconnect. And some of that is true, but it's not so much the magnetism as its effects upon the motion of Earth. Let's not forget Newton, uh, you know, his very first law of motion. And when the Earth is traveling and spinning in a, in a relatively consistent fashion, and all of a sudden you hit a little bump uh, in the road, that's going to shift your tectonic plates. Very simple physics, the law of motion. And these electrons are coming in, and when we try to read what the explanation is for everything that we're seeing, we get nothing but a bunch of hoopla. Did I say hoopla? Yeah, I said hoopla. And I would like to read to you the NOAA report um, off of solarham.com and tell you what they have to say about all these electrons, the magnetic field reversals, what's going on. But when we first 
what we want to do though is look at the dark count on Solar Dynamic Observatory. The dark count, the middle graph, is um, less ionized particles. That's why they call them dark. And you can see the helium, which is fairly inert and hard to ionize unless you pass the helium through the corona of the sun. You can see it double humps. Helium travels in pairs. The helium-3 travels with the helium-4. Coming from the sun, the helium-4 is always faster and more abundant. Therefore, the larger hump should arrive first at Solar Dynamic Observatory. But what we've been seeing in the last couple years is we've seen that that whole scenario has been turned upside down. Sometimes the smaller hump shows up first, and sometimes there's no difference between the two humps. Now, we... we set out to answer why is that happening and now we figured it out and you're you're perhaps one of the very few people that know why these humps are more equal and that's because the helium 3 which runs slower and smaller abundance is absorbing all the protons and when it absorbs a proton helium 3 turns into helium 4 that creates energy that very reaction but it also changes the the really the solar system's ratios of helium 3 to helium 4 within our own solar system and generally this did not ever happen outside the solar system the ratios of helium 3 to helium 4 are consistent across all galactic space except for what's going on in our local neighborhood So, but we go to the NOAA report, um, and we see the helium uh, coming through on the dark count, and of course, we'll get no mention of that, um, and this is just really, really crazy. I'm going to put this up for you to read, 